Hello ninjas and welcome to the Coded Dojo. How's everyone doing today? I hope you have had fun so far this week and that you are looking forward to doing some coding with me today. So as always, um, this is being live streamed. So just for the next few minutes, I'm gonna do some recapping on what we've done in the previous sessions. So if you're watching this not on the live stream, then feel free to skip forward a few minutes. Um, I always spend the first few minutes uh, just sort of going over the rules of the stream and that kind of thing. Um, just because it's good to give a bit of time for everyone to get here. Okay, so remember to be cool in the chat. If you are in the live chat, make sure that you are positive and you are encouraging. And don't be alarmed if there is some latency, uh, which means it will look like there's a bit of a delay. Um, in between you asking something in the chat and me responding to you on video. That's just the way that video streaming works. Don't worry. So we're making, this is part three in our run and gun scratch game. Um, so this is uh, an approximation of what we are aiming for. So you can see we've got this unicorn character and of course you can change this to be any other character that you like it's very easy to, to change the graphics of a game but we can move it around and we can also shoot in all directions uh, we have these skeletons being spawned we have these gems we can pick up and we have this cool background effect to make it look like we're running through the forest um, with all of these different layers if you have a look you'll see that there are actually three different layers of trees all moving at different speeds um, and then there's the buildings and the clouds that are again moving at different speeds that's called what's called a parallax effect um, it gives this cool impression of things being far away in the distance like mountains or buildings or clouds um, so that's a really useful thing to know a lot of classic games like Mario Sonic especially this is one that comes to my mind use parallax effects these old school 2d games um so yeah and the aim of the game is pretty simple survive as long as you can uh, don't hit the skeletons if you hit the skeletons too many times you lose the game so that's what we that well, that's what we're aiming for today we're going to focus on shooting our projectile so for me it's like a rainbow laser you can have it look like anything that you like. It could be like a cannonball or a laser beam or an arrow or a bullet. It depends what um, your game looks like. Because as I said, you can change your game to look like any way you like. Um, so let's take this across to my other screen. And I'll set it up over here. All right. Um, if you are live in chat, um, you can and you get stuck. You can ask me in chat for help, um, which is one of the best things about being in the live chat. Um, so if you get stuck, just write into 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 the chat. Say, ah, oh, this isn't working on my game, and then you've got to remind me what your scratch name is so I can look you up because I'm terrible at remembering everyone's scratch names. Um, and uh, make sure that you've saved and shared your Scratch game so that I can find it easily and then we can all work together on your game. I'm hoping that my internet's going to behave itself a bit more. I was looking at last week's video and it gets a little choppy at points. I've set the bitrate a bit lower so hopefully it should be fine. All right, well that should be enough time. Let's make a start, shall we? So everyone, let's uh, open up our project and what I'll do as well is I will share where we're up to so far. So this is uh, where we're up to so far. So if you're doing this and you haven't in the previous sessions, you can just click on that link and follow through. So, so far, as you can see, we've just got just the player and the enemy programmed. So today we're going to program um, the projectile. So um, let's all go down to the bottom right corner and let's go up to paint. So bottom right corner, hover over what says choose a sprite, then move it up and click on paint. You guys have probably painted sprites before. Um, so I'm gonna paint a rainbow. Um, you can paint something else if you like. Um, so you could do like a kind of 
a laser beam with like an outline if you wanted. Um, you could do something like this. Um, probably maybe a bit smaller. You could use, um, I'm going to just put together, uh, as I said, like all the different colors. You could create, you can create some pretty cool looking lasers if instead of doing a rainbow of colors, you do like different shades of blue with like the dark blues on the outside moving into lighter blue and then reverse that whole thing, have on the other side moving back to the dark blues again. Um, so what we need to do is we need to zoom in because we want this to be fairly small. If it, if it comes out really big, we can shrink it down. So that's no big problem. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rectangle drawing tool um, I'm going to turn the outline off by doing that. Uh, do that to, uh, if you click on the outline in the top left corner. Um, if you press on this sort of box with the red line through it, that means there's no outline at all. And then I'm going to start doing um, the first color of my whoop, rainbow laser. So I can see on the screen how big that is. That's pretty big. So let's make that a bit smaller. Do you know what? That's probably fine for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, once I've done that first color, I'm just going to copy this and paste it. So you can hold down control on your keyboard and press C and then press V to control paste, um, to copy and then paste. Or you can right click, go copy image, and then actually you can't do that in Scratch. Aha, but Scratch has copy paste here up in the top left corner. I'm just going to use Control-V, Control-C, Control-C, Control-V, I should say. And once you've done Control-C, you can do Control-V a bunch of times. And then you end up with all these different colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them all up. I already know that they're the right length. I'm going to line them all up so that um, they all um, sort of look like they are so it like, yeah, so they all match, they're not too, and you can use the keyboard um, arrow keys to move your images around nice and gradually if you see that they're slightly out of alignment. Hey, that's good. The other thing you need to do, make sure when you've selected all of them, when you move them around, and we'll do this again at the end if I need to add any additional colors, when you move this around, you should see in the middle of all these different um, lines, you should see that there is a sort of plus symbol in the middle and there's a crosshairs in the middle of your drawing area make sure you link these up and then that will ensure that your like laser beam uh, is properly what's the word I'm looking for um, is properly um, uh, centered so it's gonna it needs to be in the center of the drawing space all right, so I've got these stripes. Let's start to do some different colors. Let's make this one orange. You can see how much easier it is to do this. Let's make this yellow after you've already just copy pasted a bunch of stripe, a bunch of stripes. Yellow, that seems good. Uh, let's go to green. And then after green, let's go to sort of a light blue. And after that, let's go to a dark blue. And then I'm going to copy paste one more. Uh, oh, oh, I keep moving it by accident. Come on, in you go. Gently. Uh, one more up, I think. Looks good. Last one is purple. All righty. Cool. Um, once you've got this as well, and you're happy with all the colors, as I said, if you don't want it to be a rainbow, have dark, choose like red or blue and have different shades, um, with the dark colors on the outside, the light colors on the inside, and you get this really cool effect of like this laser. Um, once we've got this, we can actually select the whole thing and stretch it and make sure that it is sort of a good shape. Okay, that seems probably fine. How small do we want this? As long as it's the right shape, we can shrink this down in the size 
So in look on the right side in the middle of the screen and you should see all the different uh, uh, sort of ways of altering your sprite. Um, so if you look at size, it should be set to 100. If you click on the 100, you should be able to retype it as 50. I'm going to wiggle my mouse over the area that you'll find this here. So I'm going to say, yeah, set to 50. That's a little too small. Let's go with 75. Now, this is, all, of course, according to my taste. You can decide how big you want your lasers to be. I'm actually pretty happy with that. And remember, make sure once you're done that you grab all of your, um, your sprite and make sure it is centered. That looks pretty good. Um, we should name this as well. So I'm going to name this projectile. Do you guys know what a projectile is? Some of you guys are a bit young, so that's like a, a word that may not have come up so often. But a projectile is anything that moves quickly. So like uh, if you throw a stone, that's a projectile. If you were to shoot an arrow or a bullet or a rocket, that's a projectile. Something that you have launched away from yourself kind of thing towards something else. So in like a video game, yeah, projectile. Um, so you can call this bullet um, or laser or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it uh, projectile because it's nice and generic. And that way you understand that your game can be like uh, have your own graphics, that they don't have to be the same as my graphics. All right, so we've got our projectile sprite. We've done a bit of art. That's, uh, let's do some coding. Um, so what we are going to do is, so we are going to um, code this to work by uh, arrow keys. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to use the WASD keys to move the horse. And we're gonna use the arrow keys with our right hand to fire the projectile. So it's gonna kind of be like, if you can imagine like a, if you had like an Xbox controller, you have like one stick to control your character moving and one stick to control your character aiming. It's gonna kind of work like that, only it's gonna be on our keyboard. Um, there's a few games which do this. They're traditionally called twin sticks, uh, twin stick shooters, for example, um, or sometimes they're called arena shooters. Um, I quite like the mechanic. You could, if you wanted to, just have the projectile always point at the mouse, and then you could use that instead if you find that easier. That's absolutely fine. But I'm gonna show you how to do this because this is kind of cool and as well, if you have a joystick at home, you can actually program your joystick to work with Scratch um, and you can actually play it uh, using a joystick, which I might do a tutorial for at some point because that's quite a lot of fun. So let's do some coding, shall we? All right. So um, first of all, we need to make sure that the projectile um, is uh, hidden because we are going to have this first projectile be um, the original that's going to make clones of itself. This one is going to be invisible and it's going to follow the horse around, point in the direction we want it to point in, and then when it creates clones, they're going to fire out of, out of the, the unicorn, the player. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to con uh, events. We're going to go to events, the yellow category on the left. We're going to look at the very top and look for when green flag clicked. Drag that out. And then we're going to go to looks. The purple category on the left. Look down sort of towards the bottom. You should find a line called hide. Drag out hide and put it right underneath when green flag clicked. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a forever loop. So go to uh, control the orange category on the left. Look three down and you should see forever. Drag out that forever loop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that the projectile always goes to the player. So, um, go click on motion, uh, look four down and you'll find go to random position. Drag that out put it inside the forever. Now we don't want it to go to a random position, we want it to go to the player sprite. So click on that white triangle, 
and you should see one of your options is player. All right, so we've got go to player. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make four my blocks, and these are going to be the for the four directions that we're that we're pressing. So click on my blocks, top left corner. Click on make a block. Once you've done that, we're going to call this aim up. So a i m up. So now you should have this define aim up. We've done um, a lot of um, my blocks already, so you should be familiar with how those work. Um, this is going to be a nice, easy way of dividing up our code and seeing what each part of it does. And also, we're going to show you how useful my blocks are, or functions as we call them um, in in programming functions, because we're going to be able to use them more than once. It's going to stop us needing to co copy so much of our code. So we've got our define aim up. Look in the top left corner. You should now have a little red aim up um, code block. Drag that out and put it underneath go to player. Um, let's do that again. Let's create a new block. So top left corner, click on make a block. We're going to call this aim down. Press OK. Drag define aim down somewhere. And then look up in the top left corner for aim down, drag that, and put it inside our forever loop. Let's do this two more times, and you can probably guess we're going to do aim right, and we're going to do top left corner, aim left. Oh, if I can spell correctly. Alrighty. The aim up, aim down, aim right, aim left, doesn't really matter what order they're in, as long as they are inside your forever loop and after the go to player. It may not even matter too much that it's after the go to player, but they all have to be inside the forever loop. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to arrange this like that. So we can start doing our coding with a nice visual look at our four functions here. Okay, so let's start with define aim left. Let's program our uh, player to shoot left. Okay, so go to control. Um, Look for if then. It's about four down. Drag that out. So in control, the orange category, drag out an if then and put it right underneath define aim left. So what we want to do now is detect if the left arrow key on our keyboard is being pressed or not. We're going to put that inside the if. So to do that, we're going to go to sensing the light blue category. Look at the very top. You should have, uh, not the very top actually. You should uh, look sort of about six or so down. And you should have something called key if. So yeah, key space pressed. Key space pressed. Drag that out. And you'll notice it's this six-sided shape that fits inside the six-sided hole in our if then. So click on that white triangle where it says space because we don't care about space. We want it to be the left arrow key. So click on that white triangle. And here we go. We've got our, our arrow keys right here. Click on the left arrow key. Now, if you don't know your right from your left, don't panic, because that's actually very common amongst uh, young people. Um, the trick that I learned when I was young is hold your hands out like this, and the shape that makes an L, that's your left hand. All right, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to make it so that the projectile shoots, um, uh, points rather, in the right direction. Uh, or rather the left direction. So we are going to go to motion, the dark blue category, and we're going to look for point in direction 90. It's about eight down um, in the motion codes. Drag out point in direction and put it inside the if. So look for point in direction and click on that 90. 
So if you know degrees, specifically the way that Scratch handles degrees, you can type in the numbers that tell you what angle, which direction this should be pointing. If you don't though, that's fine because once you hit on the, once you click on the 90, what do you see? There's this really handy little wheel with an arrow pointing in exactly the direction that you want. So left is over here. Can you see me spinning this arrow like this? We're going to point it right going left, you know, put it in that left direction, which just so happens to be minus 90. Okay, so that's good. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create another code. We're going to create another my block. Uh, and this is one that we're going to reuse a bunch of times. This is really efficient coding. So click on my blocks. Um, click on make a block in the top left corner. We're going to call this one shoot. You could call this shoot projectile if you wanted. I'm just going to call it shoot. You could also call it something like fire if you wanted. But this is the code that's actually going to create that cloned projectile that's going to fire off. Okay, so move the define shoot over here and then have a look in the top left corner and you should have a little shoot my block. Drag that out and put it right underneath point in direction minus 90. Okay, all right. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go to events or control uh, control I always make that I always make confuse those two go to control the orange category on the left look towards the bottom and you should find create clone of myself drag that and put it underneath define shoot okay you want define shoot create clone of myself okay so now we have let's Let's see what we can do so far. So, so far, all we've programmed is the left direction shooting. And when we've made the clones, we haven't told the clones what to do. So, if we click go and you can move your, um, your player around. And if you press left, you'll just leave this. Um, in fact, you won't see anything because we haven't told the clones to show themselves yet. So let's stop that there and let's do a bit more coding because we need to tell the clones what to do when they are created. We're making these cloned projectiles, um, but we haven't given them any instructions yet and they're still hidden, just like the original projectile sprite is. Okay, so you should still be in control. Look towards the bottom for when I start as clone and drag that out when I start as clone. Put it off by itself somewhere let me focus in on this. Okay, cool. When I start as clone. So what we are going to do is, first of all, we don't want the clone to to be to be to spawn directly on top of the player. It'll look like, you know, um, it'll it'll be right on top of the player because that's where. Um, we want it to be sort of to come out of the player. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the clone to move forwards a little bit. Um, so we're going to go to motion, top left corner. We're going to grab move 10 steps and put that right underneath when I start as clone. Now, in my previous version of this game, I think I found 35 steps was pretty good. So click on that 10 and type in 35. This is going to ensure that the projectile is going to spawn like it's coming out of the player, not like it's on top of the player. Um, and then we are going to make sure that we can see the um, projectile because the original is hidden. So we need to go to looks. The purple category in the top left corner look near the bottom of the purple codes and you'll find show put that right underneath move 35 steps and then we might as well do this now go to events we want these projectiles to move until they hit the edge of the screen so we are actually going to look for sorry control uh, and look for repeat until so that's sort of towards the bottom 
look for repeat until. Make sure it doesn't say repeat 10, we want repeat until. So grab that out, put it underneath the show. And then while we're here, grab a delete this clone. That's the very bottom of the control codes and put it on the very bottom, not in the gap, on the very bottom after the repeat until. So remember, when do we want the projectiles to be deleted? When do we want them to go away? When, when they hit the edge of the screen. We thankfully, Scratch has a very useful um, way of uh, doing this for us without us having to do anything. And that's if you go to the, the sensing light blue category on the left side, look at the very top left corner for touching mouse pointer, drag that out just like we've done before. It fits right after the repeat until and then click on that white triangle there. Um, you'll notice we've got four options, mouse pointer, but we don't care. We don't care about that. We don't want these projectiles to delete themselves when they touch our mouse pointer. No, no, no. Um, the next one is actually what we want, edge. Edge is the edge of the screen, any edge of the screen. So that's very useful. Um, and then we decide how fast our projectiles move um, when they fire out before they touch the edge of the screen. So go back up to motion, the dark blue category, drag out a move 10 steps and put that in that gap right underneath where it says repeat until touching edge. So I think I, so I think I try, let's, let's see what it looks like with 10 steps. I think 20 steps might be a bit better, but let's do a test. Now remember, it's only gonna work firing left. So let's hit go. There we go. We've got this awesome laser beam that we can fire. It's uh, firing a lot of projectiles at once, but the projectiles are all deleting themselves once they get to the edge of the screen, so that is good. Because if we don't delete our clones, the game will fill up with clones and stop working. Um, or not work very well. It'll stop making new clones. There's a maximum number of clones we can make in our game. I think that Scratch enforces. Um, otherwise, Scratch would crash. All right, cool. So it's firing in one direction. Um, the speed is 10 steps. So if you look at that 10 steps speed, click on that, that 10, and type in 20. And that looks pretty good. So now we've got a bit of a Nyan Cat thing do going, don't we? That's kind of that's kind of funny. All right. So we've done we've done it firing out of the left side um, of the unicorn. There's also some other stuff uh, we're going to do. So you can leave it like this if you want, but this is actually a bit too easy because we're able to create this continual once we code in the projectiles to destroy the enemies, um, it's gonna to be too easy just to flood the screen with a bunch of projectiles and always win because we just fire impossibly fast. So we're actually gonna code in a cooldown on our ability to shoot. Um, so I need you to look for define shoot for me. Look for define shoot. So a cooldown is a fairly common video game term that refers to how long it takes between you when you do something and when you're allowed to do it again. If you have like a special power that you use or even something simple like being able to shoot, there is usually a period of time you have to wait before you do it again. Um, so we're gonna go to um, control we're going to grab an if, then drag that out and put it around create clone of myself. We're going to have a little countdown timer that ticks down every time we shoot um, and tells us, tells us if enough time has passed for us to be able to shoot again. So if then create clone of myself. So first of all, we need to create a variable. We've already done variables in this game with our health. Um, so I won't go into too much details about variables. Look on the left side of the screen. There should be a dark orange category called variables. Um, click on that, 
top left corner, click on make a variable. And we're going to call this shoot cooldown. So shoot cooldown. I put cooldown as one word. I think that's fine. As long as you understand what it does, and as long as you don't get confused if you call it something different to me, when I say shoot cooldown and you're like, oh man, what did I call that again? You can call it whatever you like. But if you sometimes, but if, but if you, but, but if you, but if that's the kind of thing that might happen, just call it the exact same thing I call it. Because then when I refer back to that variable, you'll know exactly which one you need to do stuff with. So we've made a new variable, shoot cooldown. This is just going to be a countdown timer that's going to tick down every time we fire our weapon, our projectile, um, and act as this, a bit, uh, as, this counter, as this countdown timer before we're allowed to shoot again. And it's going to happen very fast. Um, so we've got um, our new shoot cooldown variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a set variable to zero. So you're going to have set maybe health to zero. But if you look in that top left corner, you should have something that says set and then a variable name with that little white triangle and then to zero. Drag that out and put that right underneath where it says if then but right above create clone of myself, okay? Now this currently for me says set health to zero, but I don't want to be doing anything with health. We're using our new shoot cooldown um, variable. So click on that white triangle and select shoot cooldown. And for now, let's say uh, we'll set the shoot cooldown to five. This countdown timer is going to tick down very quick, but you can change this number later if you want to be a smaller number if you want to shoot faster, or to be a larger number if you want to shoot less often, less rapid fire. Um, and so now what we need to do is we need to create something inside this if to check to see if the timer has hit zero or lower. So let's go to operators, the green category on the left. We need a less than operator. So that's uh, seven down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. Um, the symbol for less than is an arrow pointing left. If you're if you've come if you've uh, done that in maths yet, then uh, an easy oh, I won't worry about that. Uh, it's an arrow pointing left, uh, so it's going to be pointing towards that empty space with the fifty on the other side. So this is what you should have: this space arrow pointing towards the space, and then a fifty. Um, so this less than operator. We're going to use this um, to see if our cooldown, shoot cooldown has reached a low enough point. So go back to variables and then look in the top left corner and you should have shoot cooldown as this little round variable. Drag that out, shoot cooldown, just a little round thing, and it will fit in that first space in our less than operator. And if it's, we, so the question that we're asking is, has the countdown timer, has the shoot cooldown hit zero or less? So if we're asking less than a number, we need to be asking, is it less than one? Because what's less than one? Zero. Um, so click on that 50 and type in one. It doesn't matter too much if you type in zero there. It'll just make, mean the countdown timer goes a little bit longer. So we've got our question. Our question, our if then, is asking: Has the shoot down cool? Has the shoot cooldown reached less than one, so zero or lower? If so, set it back up to five, and create clone of myself to f to cr to fire that projectile. So what we need to do now is we need to do put into our code something that makes the cooldown constantly tick downwards like a countdown timer. So we could even do that. Yeah, we can do that. No, we actually, we, we, so we're actually going to need to do that in our forever loop. So look for when green flag clicked and then it's got the hide in our forever loop. We've got to make sure this goes inside our forever loop because the countdown timer always needs to be ticking down. Um, then look for change variable by one. 
So yours might say change health by one, drag out change variable by one, and put it inside the forever loop. Uh, probably after go to player. It probably doesn't matter too much um, as long as it's inside the forever loop. Um, click on that white triangle, make sure that it's selected as shoot cooldown. Click on the one and type in minus one because this number needs to be ticking down, not ticking up. If we change shoot cooldown by one, it will be going up, it will be increasing. We don't want that to happen. All right, let's test that, shall we? Remember, we can only shoot left so far. So hit go, and now there we go. So now I'm firing at a much more reasonable um, pace. And you can even see that shoot cooldown timer is, as I'm holding down left, is constantly ticking down from five. And this is me just holding down the left mouse button, a left, uh, left arrow key on my keyboard to shoot left. Okay, now if we wanted we could just stop here or rather not stop here we could just copy the code that we've got for if key left arrow pressed um, and we could fire in then four directions we could fire left up down and right and we'd be done finished no problems but let me show you something with my original so if I can fire left, I can fire right, I can fire up. Oh, hello, cat. He's bringing me his toy. He wants me to play with him. I'm doing a stream, cat. I'm sorry, I can't play with you right now. Um, so you can see I can shoot left, I can shoot right, I can shoot up, I can shoot down. But also, if I hold down two arrow keys, I can shoot in a, diag in a diagonal. And I quite like that. I quite like being able to shoot in a diagonal. Now, to do that, we do need to do some more code. So if you want, you could just stop here, um, or rather, just look at the code, um, adapt the code for shoot left to do shoot up, right, down as well. But before I do that in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you just a little extra step um, that's going to allow you to um, fire in all sorts of cool diagonal directions, which I really like. Okay, uh, let's move this back over here. Okay, so let's go back to our aim left. I'm just going to move some of these other define. So we need to look for define aim left. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see it nice and easy. All right, so it's pretty simple so far. If you press the left arrow key, then point in a direction and shoot. Easy peasy. So in order to be able to fire diagonally up, like uh, up and up and left, hello kitten. Um, in order to be able to do that, we need to have another if in there to check. And if you want to be able to fire diagonally down and left, just hit my my, my uh, <laughs> microphone there, then we need another if to check for that. So let's do right click on this if key left arrow pressed. So right click is not your normal click. Um, and then you'll notice that when you right click on it, you should get an option for duplicate, add comment or delete. We want to duplicate. So duplicate that. And now, just put this off by itself for now. We've got a copy of this. So, um, drag out the shoot. Don't need that. We just want this if key left arrow pressed, then point in direction minus 90. So, grab, so duplicate this new if we have, like this and put the other if directly underneath. So now you should have this whole thing here is two ifs with a little key um, pressed point in direction inside it. Then get this whole thing, these, this hold this whole thing and drag it and put it right underneath point in direction. Kitten, I'm busy. Down we go. 
So drag that whole thing and put it right underneath point and direction but above shoot. Okay, so have a look at this because what we're going to do is we're going to create our two left diagonals. So we're already pressing left arrow key. That's fine. So so now with pressing left arrow key, if we go uh, press up as well, then we'll shoot diagonally left and up. Um, and if we press left and down, we'll shoot diagonally left and down, right? So have a look at those two little ifs in the middle and change the first, uh, change one of them to up and the other one to down. So now we have if key left arrow pressed, point in direction minus 90. Then inside as well, we've got if key up arrow pressed, then point in direction. And if key down arrow pressed, then point in direction and then shoot. So now what we need to do is um, click on that underneath where we've got if key up arrow pressed, then click on that minus 90. So remember, this is left and up. So it's gonna be diagonally left and up. So drag your arrow until it's pointing diagonally left and up. And if you want to type it in, it's minus 45. Oh dear. Oh. The cat is trying to drag my mouse away. With its, with <laughs> my mouse cable got tangled with, with the cat toy that he was trying to get me to play with him. I'll play with you after the stream, okay, kitten? All right. So, um, we've got point and direction minus 45, and then we've got if key down arrow pressed, point in direction, click in that. Remember, this is gonna be key left and down. So we're pointing down and left. So drag the arrow to point down and left. And that should be minus 135. Point in direction minus 135. So look very carefully at this because I know there's a lot going on. Um, you should have these, the first statement is, have you pressed the left arrow? And then the other two statements are, have you also pressed the up arrow? Or have you also pressed the down arrow? And if so, it becomes diagonal. So let's test this, shall we? And then at the end of that, once we've decided which direction we are pointing the projectile, then we shoot. So again, it will only work if we press left and then either up or down. So now we do have this cool effect where we can press left and then also up to go diagonally up or also down to go diagonally down. Okay, that's great, that's cool. So what we need to do now is copy all of this code and change um, all of the keys that we press and the angles that those um, equate to. So I'm gonna go through this a bit quickly because it should be mostly straightforward. So right click on our if that's right underneath, define aim left, right click on that and duplicate. And let's move this whole thing across underneath define aim right. So the first arrow key needs to be the right arrow key. If key right arrow key pressed, let's click on that minus 90, point in direction. Oh, that's pointing left. Let's change that around to be pointing right. So now that we're firing right, are we also firing up? In which case we'll be firing up and right. In which case, click on that minus 45, drag that around to up and right, so that comes out at point in direction 45. Ah, or instead, are we also pressing down? In which case, click on that um, number, minus 135, drag the arrow to be pointing right and down. So that is point in direction 135. Let's give it a test. So now if we press right, we should be able to fire right. If I press up as well, we're firing up and right. If I press down as well, we are firing down and right. Perfect. All we need to do now is do up 
and down. So let's copy the whole thing again. Hover over the if, right click, duplicate, drag that. Let's put it underneath define aim down. So if key right arrow pressed, well, we're pointing down. So click on that white triangle and press down arrow. Point in direction, well, which direction is down? Click on that 90, that's not the right direction. Point that down. <coughs> Ugh. Goodness. So we point in direction down, which is 180 if you're typing it in and not using the wheel. So now if we're pointing down, we could also be pointing left. So let's click on that white triangle and change that to left. And if we're doing that, then we're going to be pointing down and left. So diagonally down and left, drag the wheel around. It should be minus 135. And then after that, we could also be pressing right. Those are the two like combos we can do with down is left and right. Once we've done that, click on the 135. Ah, oh, that's actually already correct. Let's test our aim down code. So we hit go. I'm going to press down. Yep, good, that's firing. Now if I press left as well, good. If I press right as well, good, excellent. All right, we've only got one more to go. So let's right click on this if, the, the if just underneath define aim down. Let's duplicate it. All right, let's drag you up here. Make sure you don't get stuck on anything else. Put that inside, define aim up. I'm going to make some more space here. So, okay, so underneath define aim up, we need to change this key down arrow. Well, that doesn't sound right. Let's go down, let's go key up arrow. Let's click on the direction. Let's drag that arrow around so it's facing up. Let's, and so will the two, what are the two directions that can combo with up? It's going to be left and right. Just the same as down. So if key left arrow pressed, we need to be pointing left and up. So drag that direction round. And if key right arrow pressed, click on that number and drag it to 45. So if key left arrow pressed, it should say point in direction minus 45. If key right arrow pressed, then point in direction 45. So let's test this now. And we should find that with all four of these working, you can hold down all sorts of cool combinations of arrows and be shooting in the direction that you want. Which I think I really like this kind of control scheme. I find it really satisfying. The ability to fire behind you when you're running forwards and that kind of thing. I think it's really cool. Okay. So now what there's one there's one key problem. The skeletons, when they get hit with a projectile, do not die. <laughs> so let's click on our enemy um, sprite. We're done with our projectile. That's all working. Um, I don't think there's anything else we need to do or to do a quick check. No, that all seems fine. Got everything working there. Yep, we're good. So let's click on the skeletons. Now, we did our skeletons last week, and you'll notice that I've already made a little define destroy skeleton question mark. Let's have a look at that. Defoy, define destroy skeleton. Now, this is nice and simple, and it's going to allow us to put in our score. Um, so if you know how to put in a high score, this is also be a good opportunity for you to put in a high score. If you don't, then check out some of the other tutorials. I'm sure you'll pick it up because making a high score is pretty much the same in every game that you make. So let's, um, so underneath the define destroy skeleton, let's go to control. Let's drag out an if then. We're gonna do simple collision code, which Scratch is, does very easily by, if, by having an if then, then after you have your if then, you go to sensing, you look at the top and you should have touching mouse pointer, drag that out. 
we're going to click on that white triangle and we're going to select projectile, not mouse pointer, projectile. So if touching projectile, then let's go to uh, variables, the dark orange category. Let's make a brand new variable for this. Click on make a variable. We're going to call this score. You could also call it something like points if you wanted. Um, and then grab change variable by one. So yours might say change health by one. Drag that out, that change variable by one. Put it right underneath if touching projectile then. Now we don't want to change the health. Click on that white triangle. We want to change the score by one. Nice, change score by one. And then we're going to go to events. Gonna look, uh, or control, I should say, my usual mistake. All look all the way to the bottom for delete this clone and pop that right underneath change score by one. So now we have a score. Um, if we go back to variables, you'll notice we don't, the player doesn't need to know what the shoot cooldown is. So look in the top left corner, you should be able to untick the box, that blue tick box next to shoot cooldown. And now if you go to the top right corner, you can move around your health and your score a little bit so that they're where you want them to be. And now you've got your two variables and you should be able to shoot your skeletons. So if your projectile is a bit too big, feel free to change its size to make it a bit smaller. Um, if you feel it's like a little too easy. In fact, I might even do that. Let's change this to 25 size. Uh, I think I like that better, yes. Not too much smaller, because it's just a bit too big. In fact, let's try 20. Maybe that's too small. No, again, that's pretty... Wait a second, I'm making the skeleton smaller. Let's try that again. Uh... I was let's let's uh, make the skeletons back up to 30. Let's set the projectile down to 60. Um I don't I don't mind that. I think I quite like that. Maybe just 65. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So obviously, it's your game. You can decide how big things are. Um, obviously, it's kind of fun to make things hugely big or absolutely tiny and small. Uh, that's kind of fun as a joke, as like a bit of a you know bit of bit of mucking around. But it, but think about what makes most sense for your game, so that you can get people um, playing your game. There's one thing we need to do um, in between games. Our score is not going back to zero, so the score kind of makes no sense if it doesn't start at zero when you start playing the game. So we need to put something that sets the score back to zero at the beginning of the game. So we could put this in the skeleton code if we wanted. You can actually put this wherever you like, but I'm going to choose to put it in the player code. So have a look, um, click on the player um, sprite, look for when green flag clicked. You should already have a set health to 10 at the beginning of the game, drag out a set variable to zero, put that right underneath when green flag clicked, but click on that white triangle and change it to score. So you should have set score to zero, right underneath when green flag clicked. And now when we hit the green flag, yeah, the score goes back to zero. So feel free to put in a high score in your, in your, in your own time um, before next week. Uh, feel free to adapt this game. Feel free to adapt the things that I have shown you today to um, uh, work in different games that you want to make. You could make a, a, a very different style of game using this kind of mechanic of the firing of the projectiles in various different directions. Feel free to have a bit of a play around with the numbers. Um, have a look in the projectile code. See. Um, if you remember which numbers to change, if you want the weapon to shoot and rapid fire or move, or you want the projectiles to move slower or, or move faster, um, have a bit of a play around. 
um, all else fails as always this um, this project is shared on scratch so you can always come back to this and check it out uh, see if something goes wrong with your um, your project you can have a look see the difference um, otherwise as well if you have something go wrong with your project it doesn't work leave a comment on the YouTube video um, or send me a message through scratch um, and I will get back to you with an answer um, so I hope you have had fun um, I certainly have had fun um, next week we are going to do the parallax effect which is not a gameplay thing but I think it looks so cool it just adds so much so that's the parallax effect is what enables us to do that whole background with the buildings and the trees um, and I also found a really easy way to make all the trees look different um, that I'm gonna I look forward to sharing with you guys um, and we may even have chance to do the gems as well and yeah and then and then maybe we'll move on to another project after that um, I had hoped to maybe do some different types of weapons maybe a boss battle but maybe this project isn't the right time for that um, we'll see um, it's always I think doing the really long projects that are a bit harder for people to follow so much as I like doing really long projects over multiple sections um, I think it's sometimes good just to do just a few short one-off sessions or and keep the projects moving so they don't get too long I really enjoy them though so and again let me know in the comments if you would like me to do uh, any projects um, any specific games you would like me to do in these sessions then give me a comment for future ideas um, I was in Beachborough Library and one of and someone stopped me and asked uh, for something they wanted us to do in the future is Battle Cats which is like one of those games where you have a base, you summon enemies, the enemies walk across to the enemy base and they fight. Uh, sorry, you have a base, you summon like units, the units um, all walk across and fight other units that have been summoned by the other base. I think that's probably pretty possible to do in Scratch. It would be a bit of a long project, but I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, so let me know if you think that's a good idea um, or if there's any other games that you'd really like us to make. Um, so as always, we do these every Thursday at 4 p.m. I've already told you what we're doing next week. Um, if you subscribe and ring the bell, you'll get notifications for future live streams. Um, and if you check out uh, the, com uh, the, the description, I've got links to the library's Eventbrite page. We're starting to run physical coding sessions again. We're going to have some stuff coming up for the school holidays. I think it's going live very soon. It may already be live by the time you see this. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of coding stuff happening in the, during the school holidays. And there's a bunch of other really fun stuff happening during the school holidays as well. Um, so check that out. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything. So until I see you guys next week, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.